guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you guys stopped by today because today's video is going to be a little bit different. So, I have a lot of people asking me, Jess, where do I get your patterns? Jess, where can I print your patterns off? Jess, can I download your patterns, please? And my answer is sadly you can't. Um, I draw out all my patterns, um, so I don't really have a website I go to. I don't download them, I don't print them off. I make them myself, and I figured I'd show you guys how I make them, so maybe you guys can make your own patterns as well. So you don't have to buy them off the internet or something like that. You can just draw them out, and it's a lot easier than you think. So I'm going to show you how to draw out a few of my patterns. Um, I'm going to explain a few things along the way, and when I come back, I will answer a couple other questions you guys had for me, and we'll call the video good after that. Okay? Okay? Okay, okay. And next thing, to start my first pattern, I'm going to take a bunch of pieces of paper, lay them out, and tape them together into a larger sheet of paper. This pattern here is for a sloth that I made in my previous video. For making a sloth, you'll want to make the arms pretty long, and then you can make the back legs kind of short. I'm going to roughly lay out the creature's shape on the paper and refine it as I go. I'm using different colors and markers to help show off what I'm doing, but I mainly just use a pen. So when you're doing this, you can draw with basically whatever you feel more comfortable using. To make a pattern to use for the belly of the creature, you'll want to get a piece of paper and make a strip as long as the body that you've drawn out already. You'll fold this in half lengthwise. What I do next is use the body that I've drawn out as a reference and mark where the arms and legs are along the length of the belly and chest. You'll draw these spots as wider than the rest of the belly and chest. After cutting it out, you'll have something roughly like this. Now I'm going to show you how to make a pattern for a dragon. This is a main pattern that I like using for my pieces. This pattern I'm using is going to be for a much larger piece that I'm making. Now after drawing the shape of my dragon out, I've decided that I want to give it some markings. And to do this, I'm going to draw out my markings onto the pattern that I've drawn out already. After I have the markings the way I like it, I can then cut the markings off of the main body of the pattern, and when I go to cut my fabric out, I can now cut the markings as a different color of fur as the um, body itself. For the last pattern that I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how to make a deer. I picked this pattern because it's actually pretty easy to alter and you can make it into different patterns. Um, this pattern is pretty easy to make into a horse, a unicorn, actually you can even make it into a fox or a wolf by giving it a different tail and adding a little bit more girth to the end of the feet, like rounding it off.
I do my patterns. If you noticed I moved, well, my big needy baby needed some attention. Huh. Did you need attention? Did you need attention and you weren't helping me do the recording? Yeah. Anyways, to the questions you guys had. Um, you guys wanted to know what type of stitching I like using. Um, I got two types of stitches that I like using. I use a running stitch mainly, and then I use a ladder stitch for um, closing up the creatures or doing um, sewing where the fur is facing you while you're sewing it. But you guys can use whatever stitching you're more comfortable using, whatever works best for you. I mean, it's, it's art. It's free for interpretation. Come on. <laughs> Brat. Come on, come here. Come here. Okay, the next question you guys were interested in was how do you make your legs look defined for the creatures and stuff like that? Well, um, that really doesn't have too much to do with the sewing. Sewing's very basic for the legs. It's usually a like, straight line, maybe curved, depending on what type of creature you're using. Um, most of the shaping of the legs is done by shaving the fur down in areas. Um, I'll probably make this my next tutorial video um, where I don't make a whole creature. I'll probably sit in front of the camera and um, shave down a creature. <laughs> And then finally, one of you guys wanted to know if a sewing machine would be useful for this or is it better to just hand stitch? It's really a yes and no kind of answer. Um, a sewing machine would be good for time. Um, it would be helpful for a tighter stitch. But then there's some angles that when you're sewing, a sewing machine just can't do. So you're always going to need to hand stitch some stuff. Um, mainly like closing up the creature. Some of the angles with the legs makes it really difficult to use the sewing machine. And then also I like using crochet thread um, to sew my creatures and you can't really do that with a sewing machine. So that would be another thing is you won't have as strong of thread to use. Okay guys, I think that's it for the video. I think someone needs some attention. Um, so me and Axel are going to go play. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, make sure you leave me a like, subscribe if you haven't done that, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Quit chewing on it! <laughs>